Hi everybody and welcome to a very special episode of The Vault. This is the Fallout Review Discussion. We're also going to get on to some more stories later on. But first, to introduce today's cast, to my left. Hi, Miranda Sanchez, that's me. Uh, I almost forgot. Next to her. I'm Steve Butts. Yep. And I'm Dan Stapleton. Uh, Dan's our reviewer. Those of you wondering where Sean is, he's in the booth right now filming this. He'll be back next week. So uh, thank you. Yeah. Hi, Sean. So <laughs> let's get right into it. Dan, you reviewed this game. What'd that's you give it? it? I gave it a 9.5. Ooh, that's a good score. I think it's real good. Yeah, that's real I, good. I think it's an amazing game. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how did that story contribute to that score? Uh, well, what's the story have to do with this? I, I think it's one of the best stories that Bethesda's done. Wow. Uh, so, I, I think probably the best story that Bethesda's done. I actually haven't played all of them, but the best one I've played out of, out of their last several, certainly. So, you're talking across the arc, uh, not just the Fallout universe, but the arc of Bethesda's games in general. Yeah. I mean, Bethesda has only done one Fallout game before this, Fallout 3. Uh, New Vegas was, was Obsidian. Yeah. Um, and I think New Vegas' story uh, I might like a little bit better, mm -hmm. but this is up there. Okay, cool. Uh, now, we're being very careful about spoilers here, but uh, guys, uh, you're a little bit into the story. Are you enjoying it so far? I am, yeah. I mean, the funny thing is, Dan and I were just talking about this. I'm 40 hours deep in the game. I've done two main quests. That's pretty much, <laughs> that's pretty much how I played Skyrim. Yeah, so I mean, for me, my, uh, my experience of the story is just all the emergent stuff that comes about as a result of your interaction with the world, and then all the little side quests, all the little bits and pieces that you find in the odd corners of the Fallout Wasteland. Um, that are nevertheless like engaging from a story perspective, uh, but uh, humorously like sometimes disconnected. Like you go in one place and you find a can of yellow paint and blue paint, and you mix them together to make green paint, and you have no idea what's happening. And then <laughs> eight hours later, somebody says, "Boy, I could really use some green paint." And you say, "Ah, I, I have such back at Sanctuary right now. Let me go grab it for you." Okay. What about you, Miranda? Um, also, kind of just going through the main story very slowly. Mm -hmm. um, I find it really interesting that. As I've done a lot of more side quests, those relate to other quests I do later. Like, yeah. oh, well, we know you because you were do you did this big thing. I'm like, oh, oh hello. Oh, yes, that's me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's kind of cool to see how that impacts maybe what you do and what you don't do. And it's like, if I hadn't done this thing, would they have trusted me more? But it's interesting. None of you, but n none of you have, have beaten the story besides me. Not uh, even close. <laughs> right, and which which I think, you know, the, the story contributes to, to what makes Vlog great, but... Uh, the world is the much more interesting part. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, the, the story is, is a very small part of it, really, in the now, grand, scheme, grand scheme of things. We know from the beginning, this is no spoiler for anybody in the first few minutes of the game, uh, you know, your son is missing. Uh, and that's a very that's a matter of some urgency in a human life. If your well, child disappears, um, you know <laughs> they pretend like it is. But this is one of my issues with the game, and I don't think it's specific to Fallout. I think it's more about the computer RPG genre in general. Is that um, there's no sense of, of uh, time or the pressure of time. So, yeah, Sean's missing, but let me stop and collect all these ashtrays and clipboards before I go find him. Um, like, ooh, I, mud fruit, <clears throat> you know. <laughs> yeah, I found one settlement where they said, um, hey, there's some raiders right next door that are giving us problems. And then there was another settlement right next to that where a guy said, my father's been kidnapped, and he's all the way over on the other side of the map. And I thought, well, the kidnapping seems a little more urgent, but... Like the Raiders are right there. Why don't I go do that first, and then I'll find your father? And there was never any sense, uh, for me at least, that um, choosing to to delay that second mission would ever come back to bite me. Now, let me ask you yeah. this. Fallout 1 had a time limit yeah. uh, for story reasons. As a matter of right. fact, it had two time limits, depending mm -hmm. on different things that you set off. Would you prefer that you have a big open world with no time limits and have the story abstraction, or would you prefer that pressure that comes with an, an urgency uh, being pushed in by some kind of uh, outside imposed restriction? I think it makes sense to have like quests expire. Like If you have mm -hmm. a call for help from somebody and like, hey, I'm locked up by super mutants and they're probably going to eat me soon or something, that guy is going to die soon, yeah. so it would make more sense to have that as a limited engagement thing. So they do have, uh, in Fallout 4, they do have one thing that, that is time limited, and that's the uh, settlement defenses. Right. Okay. So that, that's that's the only time those happen, and actually, honestly, when that, when that happens, I'm annoyed, mm -hmm. because I don't want to necessarily stop what I'm doing and go defend the settlement. So most of the time I just didn't. So <laughs> critically, you preferred uh, you preferred what they did with this, then. You were very happy with the way they put it. Yeah, and, and I think contextually they do a good job of making it making those things seem important, but not imminent. Mm -hmm. um, because of the the kind of cryogenic uh, nature of the story, mm -hmm. uh, like you, you know that some time has passed, um, you know, that even if it's, you know, whether it's hours or, or whatever, you know that some time has passed uh, from when Sean was taken. So it's not like I have to chase that guy down right now. It's, it's just right. the, the overall, I want to find out what happened to my son. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense too, because you can't just, you know, 
automatically hunt him down and ask one person, hey, where's this kid? Oh, he's right there. All right, you know, yeah. it's not going to be that immediate. <laughs> Back to the clipboards. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, IGN's review discussion of uh, Fallout 4, continuing here with the question, uh, how does having a voice affect Fallout 4? Uh, for the first time in the series, Dan, you reviewed the game. Mm -hmm. We've got a voice now. Right. I. I don't think it added much. Like the only thing it really added was I didn't have to strain to read from across the room when I was playing on the couch, uh, which is you know it's nice. Um, but you know it does it does take away from the ability to uh, to kind of you know put my own voice uh, the voice in my head uh, mm -hmm. in, on my character because like I can you can make a pretty radical range of characters. Uh, and it makes it harder to imagine harder to imagine that your character is kind of like what if I, what I wanted my character to talk like like Christopher Walken. What? <laughs> Can you please do that? I'd love to hear. That. <laughs> I, I actually liked it. I thought it was really helpful. I, you know, we were talking before about how the the performances. I don't want to say bland because that's sort of a pejorative term, but it's relatively flat. <laughs> um, and I feel like it, it sort of has to be. Like Luke Skywalker is not as interesting as Han Solo, and Harry Potter is not as interesting as Hermione, right? Like I feel like sort of the character that you're meant to inhabit and invest yourself in has to be a little bit of a blank slate. Batman syndrome, everybody around you is more interesting than you are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I felt like in terms of the quality of the storytelling, it, it, it made it feel more natural to me that my character was also talking to everybody else, mm. as opposed to just sort of sitting there silently in a game like, um, well, no, Fable did that, right? Like, where your character doesn't really say a lot. Right. I, I think, uh, just to, to tack on, I, I think it, it may have had uh, a negative impact on the story, the way the dialogue works mm -hmm. uh, in the number of options of responses you have, because they're limited to four now. Sure. It's a very Mass Effect style thing. Right. Um, which, you know, I, I, I would have liked to have seen more, uh, like, skill-specific uh, dialogue options, and yeah. now that like there's just charisma, sometimes right. uh, I, w I would have liked to have seen more of that. Um, I don't think it, it really hurts it really bad, but I, I, if if I have a choice between those and voice, I would choose the options. What about you, Miranda? Um, I liked having the voice. It I don't have to choose the voice to make it feel like my character still. Um, I mean, I think the visual customizations for that really is what matters to me the most. Mm -hmm. um, and I do agree that the blank slate is the easiest to go, so that way it's a little bit easier for you know all characters or all people to kind of feel like this is their character still a little bit. Right. Um, but I agree with you, Dan. It would have been nice to have a little bit more options that utilize your specific skills mm -hmm. more often. Um, or the trade on your reputation. Right, right. Yeah. Like There's it would no be karma system cool. in right. before. Yeah, so it's kind of weird. So I, it's like, well, I, I guess I'm good because my companion says I've been doing well. Yeah. So yeah, the, the companions are kind of a built-in karma system where yeah. like a a, a uh, person who's a goody two shoes will will like when you do good things, and a person mm -hmm. who is not will like when you do when you do not great things. It's very like a Bioware game in that respect. Yes. You know, the yes. companions are meant to be sort of like this. Um, like a Greek chorus, like yeah. kind of commenting yeah. on the choices that you're making. Oh, you just made me so happy with that analogy. Um, <laughs> as for me, uh, everybody can just shut up in video games. Uh, so, wow. Um, that's, uh, I, I'm always happier if I, have, if I have text at the bottom. If nobody ever talked in a game again, I'd be great with it. Um, uh, except for Telltale Games. They usually like them there for some reason. Um, moving on to our Fallout 4 review discussion. Uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, guys, uh, Dan, you, review, you reviewed the game. What about the bugs? I mean, they they are a bummer, no no doubt about it, except for the hilarious ones. Yeah, um, yeah and there yeah. are some hilarious. Yeah, ones. I mean, I, I think it's it's there's no question that that you know these games would be better if they weren't buggy, mm -hmm. but it, not all bugs are created equal. Uh, some of them have a major impact, and some of them don't. Like some of them, like, they are, just don't interfere that much. Um, so you know, I, I gave Fallout 4 a 9.5. Right. Uh, in spite of those bugs and the performance issues it ha it's having on consoles, because uh, I it just didn't. It didn't really have that great an impact on me. Uh, there's there's nothing in there that that stopped my progress uh, through the main story. Like there were a few side quests I couldn't complete, but I already gotten all the XP from killing stuff and all the loot, so I still felt rewarded. Um, like I, it, it just wasn't that big a deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, it would have been better if they weren't there. What about you guys? What did you? Uh, what's your experience with this? Bet? So thankfully, I haven't come across any game breaking bugs that just like completely. Like injecting me from the game, or which platform were you on? Xbox One. Yeah. So frame rate has been mostly very steady. Like I think I've only had one combat issue where there was like a weird frame rate thing. Um, clipping is obviously a big deal. Um, yeah. People kind of getting stuck in walls. I'm like where, where are you going, dude? I can't shoot you from there. Um, <laughs> and for the most part, that's kind of like limited to it, mm -hmm. which is nice. Um, I hope I don't hit any of those quest bugs. Um, that is really disappointing. It's like I worked really hard to get through this quest, and now I can't. 
finish it. Thankfully, like I said, has not happened to me yet. Um, so it's not a big problem, but it is an issue that, you know, other people are experiencing that because it's like, I can't finish this thing and I work yeah, so hard. Yeah, I, I ran into a main quest ending bug and had to go back oh, to an geez. earlier save. I mean, that was a, a primary quest line bug. But even, you know, I feel like it's, I was talking with a, a friend about this today. I almost feel like Fallout games are, if you're a fan of, of Bethesda games, you're like being a fan of Godzilla movies. <laughs> um, you, you, you see the strings on the planes and it doesn't bother you. You're there for the Godzilla movie. Uh, right. People who don't like Godzilla movies, I totally get not liking them. I understand that it's frustrating. To me, that's what I'm there for. Um, and in a strange way, I forgive things because of the nature of the beast. I forgive things that I wouldn't yeah. otherwise. What about you, Steve? I, I think I feel exactly the same way you did. Like I think the bugs are something you accept uh, as a natural consequence of the game being so big and so open-ended with so many interrelated dependent systems. Um, so when I come across something that's mildly annoying or amusing, I just accept it as uh, the price you have to pay to live in a world or, or to adventure in a world that's so rich and so full of content and so um, just so full of pieces that connect with each other across the map. I think that's a, that's a great point that we would probably be a lot less forgiving of, of problems like this if there were any games that did a similar thing better. Yeah. But nobody has done something that, like this type of RPG as well as Bethesda has. Uh, like they've set the standard, and the standard and the standard for that type of game includes bugs. Yeah, so. and if this if if we were seeing the same level of uh, a lack of polish or kind of rough edges in a very scripted, directed game like Call of Duty, it would obviously be, be in my opinion, at least much more objectionable. Yeah, so relative I... relative to the the standard in this genre, right. like this is way too buggy. So while I do like some of the bugs, like there's a floating ragtag doe just <laughs> in the sky. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it is still like really bothersome that you can't complete quests. Like uh, even if sure. it is Bethesda, and we do come to know that they are buggy. Like that's just almost like unacceptable. Like you should be able to finish your game. Right. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I agree, agree with that. Yeah. yeah it's like the, that's not the thing. Okay. That, the, the thing that makes evaluating these games really tricky is that uh, like you're not. Like, if I don't hit a bug, that doesn't mean somebody else isn't, right, isn't right. going to hit that bug. Uh, and I, I had that happen with, with Fallout New Vegas, which is notoriously buggy. But when I played through, there, I had, like, a couple of, of side quests that, that just didn't work right. And it's like, well, there are a couple bugs in this, but I played through, I have a great time. And every, everyone, you know, not everyone, but a lot of people had major issues with it. Right. I just didn't have that. Uh, so, it's, you know, you're kind of rolling the dice a little bit. Quick question for all of you, uh, if you had it happen, what's an amusing or entertaining bug you saw? Anybody? I had a uh, firefight breakout in Diamond City, which I, I think was a result of having pissed off some some gangsters. Uh, that they, they they would like triggered a, a uh, ambush kind of thing. But I fast traveled to Diamond City, and that meant that they ambushed me like right in the middle of Diamond City. Oh, um, well. But which was kind of cool, except that the security guards ran away. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then. Yeah, so like every everybody ran away, uh, including the security guards, and you know I, I killed the the guys that were ambushing me. And everybody walks back, and nobody mentions it. It's uh, kind of lovely. Yeah. Yeah, like I thing. think my favorite is uh, is about a 50-50 chance anytime I return to Sanctuary that there'll be a Brahmin loaded down with uh, the, you know a huge pack of goods um, stuck in my house, <laughs> uh, unable to get through the door, and just just trying with all his might to walk through a door that is far too small for him to get through. Um, and I just look at him and I just say, like, keep at it, guy. That's good for you, because I'm out here he's, busting my ass, too. And He's like the horse in Dirt Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. <laughs> right, just yeah. can't get out of the room. Yeah, yeah. And How so, did he get in there? So How I'll go away, there? I'll come back, and he's gone. I feel like, great job. And then I'll come back a couple hours later, and there he is again in my house <laughs> trying to get out. He just really wants to be there. Yeah. What about you? Definitely the floating animals. Uh, right. That's my favorite thing. She's like, oh, ho hello up there. How is it going? How did you get there? Right. It doesn't matter. I'm going to kill you. You're going to fall down. It's all great. So like, you can't attack me. So. I saw on Destin's screen yesterday, there, he had, he had cl killed a blood bug, which are the giant mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it just kind of hung there in the air for a moment there, and then just like flipped around real fast. <laughs> yeah. My favorite uh, that I've run into so far, I was standing outdoors and a mole rat burst up next to me. So I just whacked it the melee. And I guess I hit it just as it was bursting out of the ground, and it just flew as far into the sky as you can imagine. It just vanished over the curvature of the earth. Uh, it just flew off into nowhere. Team Rocket's blasting yeah, off again. It was great. What, I, what, I, what I anticipate is in like another 12 to 15 hours, here it's going to come from the other direction. <laughs> it's going to smack me in the head. Right. So, so. Uh, no, go ahead. I hope that happens. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> Uh, reviewing uh, Fallout, or Fallout 4 review discussion uh, continuing here with uh, Dan Stapleton, the reviewer, Steve Butts, Miranda Sanchez. Uh, let's talk about crafting. Does crafting make Fallout 4 too overwhelming? 
no, it's yeah, fine. I, I, I think it's it's probably the best part about this game. Yeah. Uh, or the best new part, I would say, uh, relative to, to previous Fallout's because. Whereas New Vegas had item degradation that you had to you know repair your your items by getting similar items and using those to repair, and there was some some crafting of like you could craft ammunition, you could you could strap on some mods to your guns. Uh, this one takes that so much further, uh, and it makes it makes every item in the, in the whole world useful. Wonder glue. Yeah, it's it's great. <laughs> yeah, I wonder, the bane of our existence right. for for how right. many games now is suddenly the most useful thing in the whole wide world right. because yeah. it's used to mod weapons. Yeah. yeah. And uh, picking up adhesive, just like, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. What about you, Steve? Yeah, crafting is my favorite part of the game. Uh, I put a lot of my perk points into unlocking uh, the different crafting tiers. And what I really like about it is that it allows you to, uh, from a combat perspective, at least the way I play, suit the game to your play style. So you find just a generic pipe weapon on the ground, and immediately you could turn it into a sniper rifle or a submachine gun or a silenced pistol. Like there's all sorts of interesting things you can do with everything that you find. Um, and you can really begin to build uh, your tools in a way that's very customizable and very personal. and makes it feel like uh, you're playing a game that's asking you um, what you want it to be about. At least from a, a mechanical standpoint with regard to combat. What amazed me was how all in they went. Yeah, uh, I, I've heard people call this Fallout Happy Home Designer. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, yeah. I was doing a video with Doug and, and accidentally called it Minecraft at the end. Yeah, uh, yeah. without <laughs> thinking, I, because there is a lot of depth to what you can pull off. I mean, they, and I, you know, you talked about weapon degradation. I've hated like things degrading in mm -hmm. games since Game Boy Final Fantasy. I think when right. your fists would eventually fall off if you punch <laughs> things enough times. Just like real life. Uh, yeah, just like real life. It's very semi. It, actually, that does happen. Yeah, right. but if I if I punch something enough, my my hands would fall off. But uh, the ability to reverse that build on it, uh, it's just almost unfathomable. I know people that have barely gotten into the game because all they do is build stuff. Steve, how, how far down the track are you? I mean, have you? You're, you're talking about building settlements. Yeah, Tal. Yeah. Tal just builds settlements all day and levels up doing it. That's yeah. that's what how he plays Fallout. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's kind of what I spend most of my time doing. Oh, and, and I'm that way in Minecraft, too. You know, I'll have uh, an obsidian portal and all this other stuff, and really all I'm doing is shearing sheep all day long. <laughs> and I feel, like, I feel like I'm doing that in Fallout, too. I spent most of last night just going from settlement to settlement, making sure they were all, uh, they were all equipped with recruiting beacons and turrets, and there were enough clean white beds for everybody. Um, and to me, like, there's no big story payoff for me in terms of what the designers scripted as part of the experience. but. Um, in terms of my emotional investment in it, yeah. and like really wanting to inhabit this role of somebody who's trying to rebuild society in the wasteland, it's awesome. There's nothing better than that. And then once I found out that you could um, craft vegetable starch and make the yeah. super rare adhesives that you need to mod practically everything, um, basically everybody eats mutt fruit or mute fruit. <laughs> we had some discussion about yeah. this. Is it mute fruit or mutt fruit? I say mutt fruit. What do you say, Miranda? I guess it's mutt fruit. What do you say? I'd always read it as mute fruit. All right, so you know what? Uh, we're gonna say it's muté fruit. <laughs> uh, that, that's the answer to that one. It is muté fruit. Um, all right, uh, once again, follow-up for review discussion. I'm here with Dan Stapleton, Steve Butts, Miranda Sanchez. Uh, Dan, you gave that a game a 9.5. So 9.5, great number on ye old IGN, better than 9.4, worse than 9.6. <laughs> is, so, is this the highest number you've given a game on uh, review? Da -da. I might be. No, I think I also gave FTL a 9.5, mm -hmm. or maybe 9.6, I forget. Is Fallout 4 the best Fallout? I think it's a little bit too early to, to make that call, okay. um, because I still haven't seen, I've probably only seen like half of it. Uh, honestly, like I've barely gone near the Brotherhood of Steel. Uh, like I, I want to explore their quest, I want to see you know the different endings. Um, so like it's, it's too early to tell how flexible the, the story is, um, I mean, it's it's obviously not quite as flexible as previous mm -hmm. Fallout's, but uh, like so far, what I've seen of it, it's it's top two easily. Wow, uh, what would your other one be in your New top Vegas. two? New Vegas. Yeah. What about you, Steve? What are you thinking? Yeah, exactly the same that he said, okay. uh, which doesn't make for a super interesting discussion. <laughs> but I agree with Dan. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, we've all we've all played right. you know, Fallout One and Two, which right. are which are also amazing sure. games. Sure. Sure. Um, you know that when I when I it's. Like picking between, I think we have, we have four amazing Fallout games now. Yeah, I will say I like this better than Skyrim. 
And, oh. and Skyrim was one of my all-time favorite Bethesda Can you games. define briefly why? Can you qualify that? Uh, I think that there's easier, quicker access to more fun things to do. Uh, and the game sort of orients you on a path that is still very open, but also directed towards um, the cool little theme parks and set pieces that they scatter throughout the world. They really did make an effort to do that. I mean, th this is no spoilage to anybody. In the first few minutes, you can grab power armor, energy weapons, all kinds of things. You get a yeah. taste. Now, you're not, you're not OP at the beginning. They just give you a taste of all that's out there in yeah. a really interesting way. In uh, the first couple, I did not like. Oh, you did not like that? No. Why, Dan? Because for me, Fallout has long been about kind of banging rocks together in the beginning. Sure. Uh, mm. You know, it's like I get I get just the most basic weapons and then work my way from that. There's a progression from that to power armor and plasma weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, this one kind of skipped that that early part where you where you feel kind of helpless and and, and endangered in this really hostile world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's been nothing that's been quite so tough as that museum fight very early in the game. Yep. So that's a really interesting point. What about you, Miranda? What are your thoughts on all this? So while it's still hard to say whether if this is the best, um, it is definitely the most immediate mm -hmm. and most like, hey, like you just said, like there's power armor right available to you. But even though they give it to you, you still have to manage your like your fusion cores. Like those run out of energy, and when they're gone, they're gone. Um, yep. And they're not exactly the easiest thing to find. It's for me. It's it's less about the the balance of it because. Yeah. Like I, I kind of just avoided using power armor. It's it's more the psychological uh, sure. effect of of like knowing that I had that power armor available. It's like, well, I'm I I have this all all this powerful stuff that I can use if I want, and even if it's not super powerful, it looks super powerful. It looks super high tech. Mm -hmm. uh, I I kind of wanted a, ra a more rags to riches story. Sure. Uh, Miranda, where do you think this thing falls in the Fallouty pantheon? Um. Also. Boring answer again, kind of going along with the second favorite, maybe? I mm -hmm. mean, it could be better. I, I still have so much to explore. After which um, for you? I like Fallout 3. Nice. Ooh, okay, so New Vegas, New Vegas, Fallout yes. 3. Yeah, that's a big division in the office. I'm actually, I, I'm an old man. I'm a Fallout 2 guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, totally so. respect him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, but um, I'm, I'm really, really enjoying this game. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think the crafting element, even if just casually engaged, is so neat and yeah. works much better in the world than I anticipated it was. I thought this was gonna feel kind of shoehorned in, and it doesn't at all. It, it's uh, it's just a lot of fun. I get very emotional about my weapons. So we had to break down like our first really modified pistol because it was not as good as the other one we found. I was just like, oh, but we've been so far together. <laughs> right. I always feel bad abandoning a weapon. This yeah. one with mods lets me keep it for a longer time, but I do eventually have to leave it behind. Nope. Especially, okay. especially if you name the weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, that's why you don't name like a farm animal. Yeah, because <laughs> eventually you're gonna kill that and eat it. Yeah, mmm, tasty. I've started uh, stripping the mods off of weapons before I mm. oh, take nice. them apart, and so now I have a big toolbox just full of all the different mods that I can use for new weapons that I find. Mm. It's a little tedious, but it's kind of what I enjoy about playing that game. <laughs> I, that that kind of uh, that kind of kind of compulsive uh, uh, ability to get in and just dig in and do what you want. That's that's part of what makes these fun. Now we're gonna step away from the critical discussion now. For a little bit uh, and talk some of the vault topics uh, that we that we have for the week. Uh, the first one of these is I want to ask you guys about your favorite companion thus mm -hmm. far, and we can talk about this without spoiling much. Just just a brief description of why you like this person and who you're traveling around with the most. Um, so for me is Valentine, who's a detective that you'll find sometime, uh, and I like him because he seems the most useful. Um, he's also just kind of fun to, fun to talk to. Like all of them, of course, have their own personalities. Mm -hmm. Um, but I really like that he can unlock terminals for me. <laughs> so I'm just like, hey, yeah. uh, want to check that out so I don't have to do it? Just <laughs> opens doors for you all the time. Yeah, yeah. There it gets things he can great. pick locks and hack terminals up to a certain point. He doesn't have like master level, but I think he can right. do either advanced or expert. Right, and yeah. so that's like super useful that you can't necessarily get from all your companions. Like I doubt dog meat can do that. So. You, know, <laughs> yeah. you don't have to invest your own perk points in lock picking and, and, right. uh, and hacking. If you choose to advantage. travel with Valentine. What yes. about that personality uh, without giving too much away? Uh, Valentine's probably the most fun personality He's of a charming all of character. Uh, like I like, I like his background too. He's yeah. a interesting fellow. Yeah, when you first meet him, I did not see that coming. Right. Like I came through yeah. the door and I was like, oh, that's yeah. cool. And we don't want to say what that is. We're not right. going to spoil it. But right. it's like, ah, huh, yeah. didn't see that coming. What I was expecting uh, did not meet what I saw. Yeah, like, exactly. Oh, oh okay. That, this is cool too. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. As I said in the review, like <laughs> he's, he comes off initially as very cliche. Yeah. Right. Uh, but he develops a lot of depth. And there, there, are, there are a few great moments with him. Right. A lot of the companions feel that way. They start right. out, you're kind of like, oh, I know who this person, what they're all about. And then you discover, no, no, I don't know what they're all yeah. about. And that's a lot of fun. He's, he's also like very much part of the main story. Mm -hmm. Like he's, mm -hmm. he's, I think, the only one that is that big of a part. 
Um, so he's, he's, it's great that he is as good a character that he is mm -hmm. as he is because everyone is going to have to, to use him as, as part of the story. Mm -hmm. Dan, is he your favorite companion? Yes. Okay. Um, like I, he, was, he was with me pretty much the whole way. Um, the only thing I didn't really like about him is that I couldn't change his outfit. Right. Uh, <laughs> because right. you know he's he's a detective. His, but his, why would you? His trench coat is is really you know part of his personality. So I understand why they did that. But it's still it's like well I got this other cool thing. I want to see how he looks in it. Right. Yeah. Uh, I want to play dress up with my doll. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, he's uh, like I I did very much enjoy that. It's like traveling across the wastelands with Guy Noir, Private Eye from Prairie Home Companion. Right. Yep. It's, it's just it's just great. Uh, I love that part. So both of you guys uh, enjoy Nick Valentine. What about you, Steve? Codsworth. Codsworth. <laughs> Codsworth. So great. Codsworth. Awesome. I, I'm a, I'm a big C3PO fan, right? Ah. Uh, and Codsworth has that like servile, slightly anxious vibe that I think is really cool. And again, like inventing the emotional context for the story in my own head, my thought was always, I'm going to find Sean. I want to make sure that Codsworth is with me when I find him. Aww, so that's that, really sweet. You know, like just so that there could be that sense of like normalcy and attachment and like uh, a, a return to the idyllic days before, well, idyllic, <laughs> relatively speaking, yeah. in, in Fallout terms. Um, but yeah, for me, Codsworth, uh, I found him to be incredibly effective in combat. Mm -hmm. uh, I found him to be incredibly funny. Um, uh, it seems like all the companions have something slightly snarky to say about your compulsive desire to go around and pick up every single yeah. thing yep. you find in the yep. world. Um, but Codsworth's take on it, I thought, sort of as this robotic butler, uh, had this nice sort of humorous angle that uh, I missed with folks like Piper or Preston. Uh, Bethesda found ways to, to use humor in those characters a lot. Yeah. I love that. Now, I, I'm a fan of Deacon, who I don't yeah, want to spoil, because De Deacon starts out seeming like, like toothpaste bland. Mm -hmm. And then once you get to know him, like, oh, wow, there's a lot going on here. But the best thing about Deacon is that he compulsively changes outfits, and they don't explain this. <laughs> That's right. amazing. So wherever you are, he will change his outfit contextually. Right. So you'll be, you'll, he'll be standing behind you. You'll be in Diamond City. You turn around, and he's dressed in like a catcher's outfit. Right. You go into a vault, and he's wearing a vault suit. And you're like, where did you get that? And you're going, <laughs> right, everywhere right. you are. You know, you're talking to a scientist. You look over, and he's a scientist. And just like, right. And uh, which is also great because occasionally you catch him changing, and he's just running around in his underwear right. uh, between outfits. But I, I, I do I, that sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It, he's also useful. Yeah. Um, and and he kind of worships the ground you walk on, and I like you know I like sycophants. Uh, <laughs> so, I never I never actually met him. Oh, do yeah. you have a deacon oh, wow. at all? Oh nope. wow! Okay, deacon's my favorite companion, hands down. Yeah, I just met him. My There's a lot of them. My favorite companion moment currently is I, it, since, once I maxed out my relationship with Codsworth, I switched to Piper, um, and you know I treat a lot of the companions, and I'm sure a lot of us do, as pack mules. You know, when yep. you, as you're gathering stuff, you're suddenly over encumbered, you can't run. Hey, Piper, um, hold on to all this stuff for me, please. They offer. Yeah. So. They do offer. I also like how there's a button to to transfer all junk. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, but when I'm giving stuff to Piper, like I'm just doing it indiscriminately, and suddenly she'll have six Molotov cocktails that I forgot that she had, and we'll be in a fight, and I'm swinging at a rad roach in front of me, and suddenly I see Burst this, <laughs> this Molotov cocktail <laughs> land right in front of my feet, and suddenly everything is on fire, and here comes Piper running up with a gun shooting, and I'm just like, to me, it's really funny, and I don't know if that's a, a an intended uh, behavior, or uh, what's obviously an intended behavior, but I don't know if they intended for it to be funny that way. But that's what I love about my interaction with that companion. It's just, I didn't think it would happen like this, and suddenly I have this cool story moment that I can share. It's, it's interesting that nobody really gravitated toward the dog. Like, so I used him I used him a little bit, but right. like he's, it's like, He's well, a dog. Like, yeah, you're, I, it, dog meat, yeah. I actually, okay. I used dog meat until I met Deacon, which was fairly mm -hmm. far into the oh, game. Wow. I, I used dog meat a lot because I just love dogs, and he looks at me and goes, he makes the most compelling, yeah. incredible dog sounds ever. He does. And I, he's, he's kind of adorable, but, but honestly, like I got rid of him almost immediately because I, I didn't really know that I could. Like, uh, I mean, yeah. you know, from watching all the stuff that Bethesda had put out before, it's like, are we? Is he going to be a constant companion? It's like, right. oh, I can switch him out. Okay, let's switch him out. Right. So I wanted dog meat first. Like that's what I said last episode that I needed to find dog meat first. Like that's that was my go-to. That thing. didn't and take too long. I did. I know. I was <laughs> right. just like, oh, this is the same thing as the E3 right. showing. So oh, I know where to go get him. Um, and so I had him for a while. Uh, my problem with him is that he whines too much. Yeah. He's like, just whining a lot. Oh, are you okay? Yeah. Like, are you dying? What, what's happening? I need to take care of you. I'm like, just, just, you know, what if you just go home? Right. <laughs> oh, I, so. I, I love him. I like sending him to find things that's useful. And yeah. I, his ability to pin in the early game, especially right. when you're underpowered, right. is, is really nice. Yeah. Uh, you can hold somebody down, you get bats in for a headshot. I was playing a perception build. Mm -hmm. So pinning somebody down, I'm like, ha ha, sucker. You know, that was, <laughs> that was good. Um, 
Moving on, to, uh, let's talk about our, we're going to just briefly share, this is going to be part of Vault every week, we're going to talk about our war stories. Um, something we've been doing, you know, I'm playing a fairly paragonish, nice build, going off and being friendly and helping people, um, but honestly, uh, my first war story is I've spent way too much time playing Missile Command and Donkey Kong. <laughs> I know I've got, a, I've got a son to find out there right, in the wasteland, right. but Wait. those mini games are really well done. They yeah. are, at the, the, and I love that the Donkey Kong one has three levels instead of four. Every home version of Donkey Kong has three levels practically. Right. Nobody ever made a full one. Bethesda, I, I'm convinced that they aped that to be right. funny, and right. I just playing way too much of it, and the Missile Command game is great too. So my war story is that I took the tape out and used my Pit Boy as a Game Boy and stop and play Donkey Kong and Missile Command for way too long at mm -hmm. a time. And my son is out there somewhere, but he's such a creepy baby that I... Oh, man, that's <laughs> he, is a, he is a really weird looking baby. That is a creepy freaking baby. Uh, what about you guys? What are your war stories? Well, I, I mean, <laughs> how to pick just one. Um, I guess... The, my uh, one of my best moments, I think, was the Hoobish Comics store. Oh mm -hmm. wow! Um, which I don't want to spoil. Yeah, that's the thing. Sure. But that that was a, a really great location that I strongly encourage everyone to check out. Uh, it's got surprises, it's got humor, it's got uh, great loot. Mm -hmm. Like absolutely go to Hoobish Comics. Is there anything uh, you guys can share that's you know we don't have to talk about the location necessarily, but you know hey there was this guy and this happened. We want to yeah Miranda what do you so, got? So um, my boyfriend and I are playing together, and so we created a character together. Her name is Felicia. She's really cool. She's a sniper. Um, she's very stealthy. Right. And kind of like my favorite moment so far is that we've gotten so invested in crafting and getting our mod rank up that we made this amazing sniper out of just like a dumb rifle. Mm -hmm. And we got to kind of like close to Diamond City, like one of this lookout point in like a church. And we finally found this sniper. We're like, we haven't found a sniper, finally. And it was worse than the one we made. And so I was just <laughs> like, so cool. we did it. We've made it in the world. <laughs> we are crafting masters. What kind of uh, character are you playing, Miranda? Um, more stealth, uh, okay. very high in perception and agility. Um, looking into maybe getting some more luck because Mysterious Stranger is really nice. Um, but very much so just trying to hang back and just pick people off when we can. And if we don't, we have a massive uh, shotgun that's how, ready for people. How, how's your morality? Um, good, generally good, um, but vengeful. So, <laughs> yeah. so basically, um, you're playing yourself. <laughs> no, that's not me. I'm not a sniper. She's not basically. See, I've gotten <laughs> caught up in like political causes, which right. I didn't intend to. I thought, right. you know, maybe this time I try to be, and I just like, nope, I've gotten swept up in the fight for freedom, uh, right. and uh, did not expect that to happen at all. And it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Steve, what about you? Uh, like Dan, I mean, just so many to pick from. I think a couple that are memorable to me are uh, walking up to the Diamond City gates, not realizing that those weren't raiders. And so, get, <laughs> so getting in a getting in a firefight, uh, and this girl named Piper was just like working me, just like killing me. And I died and reloaded and tried it again and died and reloaded. And I thought this fight's not for me. I'm gonna go do something else. And then I came back and I realized, oh. Uh, I'm supposed to be talking to them <laughs> uh, and eventually like getting into the settlement and everything. So that was interesting. But the thing that I think most, uh, or the thing that I put the most of myself into the game and actually began to think about this as a role playing game and not just sort of a mechanical exercise in, in sort of story exploration is um, early on when the old lady at Sanctuary wants the drugs so yeah. that she can sort of foretell the future or she's got these visions that the yeah. drug helps her um, connect with. I gave it to her. Um, and she had the little trance and gave the information. And then I felt really bad, because I felt like here I am basically being a codependent enabler of this old lady's drug habit. And I resolved then and there, and have kept to this, uh, that outside of stim packs and Rataway, I will not use drugs in that game. Ooh. Because I want to set a good example for the other Aww. members of Sanctuary and for Sean, <laughs> when and if I ever get around to finding him. Uh, so I have a toolbox in Sanctuary that's just full of drugs that I will <laughs> never take. Uh, and once I finally opened up Diamond City, I thought, well, I could use some money, and the drugs have the highest um, cost to weight ratio, yeah, so yeah. from a standpoint of efficiency, rather than taking a bunch of Raider leather pieces over there, maybe I'll just go sell a bunch of drugs to the merchants yeah, in and Diamond so City. <laughs> and so I'm already sort of compromising my vision of what <laughs> I should be about value-wise in the game. Um, but I, I, like, I love that. I love that I care enough about yeah. what's happening to actually be making decisions that are um, 
not mechanically optimized or not based on what can I get out of this from a standpoint of game tools. So you won't use drugs, but you'll yeah. sell them as a drug. What kind yeah. of build are you playing, by the way? Uh, I am, again, a people pleaser, uh, as I typically am in this game. In pen and paper RPGs, I'm a little snarkier, I'm a little more anti-establishment, but in a game where um, there's a little bit less opportunity for nuance, I tend to just be a force for good and authority and stabilization within the worlds that I'm in. Um, and uh, from the standpoint of stats, I'm very high on intelligence and um, perception. Yeah. So I'm a modder with a lot of extra damage perks and I've only just recently leveled up to local leaders so that I could begin to tie my settlements together. Do that. Okay. What about you, Dan? Uh, I was focused on intelligence and luck. Okay. Uh, mm. Because I, you know, I was very crafty, so I, I wanted both, uh, you know, getting more stuff when I mm -hmm. from loot, uh, you know, both uh, ammo and uh, and uh, caps uh, for you know buying extra supplies, uh, and also I wanted to be able to get you know gun nut and uh, and uh, science, science yeah. yeah, so so I could tweak my weapons. Um, but, but yeah, I, I've I've I didn't really go in with a specific character like path in mind. I just kind of let it evolve based on what uh, perks I wanted to pick. Uh, and also, morality-wise, the first time I, I go through one of these games, I always I always play the goody two-shoes. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I enjoy seeing opportunities to be mean. Uh, it's like, I'm going to come back and do that. So I've, I my first playthrough was on Xbox One, and I'm, I'm now uh, on PC where it's, things are better. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely being a little bit meaner this time, quite, quite a bit meaner actually. So I'm using that sarcasm button a lot. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, a good good war story for you though is uh, my first playthrough, you know, 55 hours or so. I never saw a plasma weapon. Yeah. Oh, never saw a huh. single plasma weapon the whole time through. I'm like I get, I got ammo. And it's like I know these are out here somewhere. Um, finish the game, uh, you know, the story, and it's it's open ended after that. But so you can keep going, but. Uh, you know, had to had to write my review, so I I did that, and it's like, well, I need I need some extra footage of this game, so I just you know went off, found a plasma weapon like the first. <laughs> it was like, a, it was, right there. Yeah, it was a legendary plasma weapon too. Ooh, wow. So. Oh, wow. Is that as much fun as it sounds like? Uh, it, 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 the modifier wasn't great. I was just like plus wow. twenty five percent damage, which is I mean it's it is great. Uh, like that'll do some good damage, but it's not like a really goofy one. I just thought of the best war story they have to tell next week. Okay, because well, I don't want to, I want to overload us. With no, we're going to keep doing them. You're going to have more war stories. That's really going to be a part, big part of all this talking. War about stories our never change. Yeah, yeah. Next week, uh, well, <laughs> let's do one more, and we'll tell you next week. Uh, last thing here before we get to uh, vault housekeeping. Um, what uh, what does Fallout Four not tell you? Um, <laughs> and is that a good thing? How long How long do you have? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's. It, I didn't know a game with so much text could be so much like Dark Souls. Um, <laughs> it, it's it, Fallout Four does not always explain things well. Uh, that's an interesting uh, little nuance of it. I think it explains a lot, just not where you expect it to. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, the, the load times are a little bit long on consoles, but that's kind of good because it, it shows you a bunch of things as tips in those loading screens. Uh, I, I learned a lot from, from that. Surprising, because those don't always have great tips. Like yeah. very obvious, like, oh, if you run, you'll get to places faster. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking a very particular, there's a game that's done that. Right. It's yeah. Like, well, well, duh. Yeah, and yeah. so it's like great that they're actually making use yeah, of that and space. Not, not yeah. all of them are useful. Don't, sure. don't get me wrong, but but I, but some things did pop up and teach me uh, things that that I didn't know. For example, uh, it doesn't tell you about uh, when when you're crafting. It doesn't tell you, you can you can like load all of your stuff into the crafting bench and it's just available. Right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And apparently, I guess there's an, another trick that definitely doesn't tell you where if you if you deconstruct things into their components, they, it's much more efficient because it doesn't waste any any parts. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so it, it doesn't tell you that at all, and people are now figuring that out. Yeah, I, I, the way I understand that works, apparently if you drop things and then use your build menu to deconstruct them, you get more raw components out of them than you would if yep. you built them just piece by piece, like feeding them into the menu. Yep. Um, that's, what I've, that's what I've heard anyway. Oh. So I, I haven't tried that yet. So but, don't uh, drop all your junk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I actually, yeah. like, didn't, there's no tutorial for it, so, but it does tell you uh, a bunch if you just read all the options along the bottom of the screen in the Pip-Boy yeah. um, or in the in the crafting interface. Like, I didn't realize for like 90% of my playthrough that you can sort your inventory by weight. You can sort uh, your inventory by damage, uh, you know, uh, like your weapon inventory by damage. You can sort by all these things. Right. Like sorting by weight w would have been huge because I, I had just been going through, it's like I need, uh, when I'm managing my inventory, figure out what, what to leave behind, what to take with me. I'm like, well, how much is this way? How much is this way? How much is this way? Tell and the I, folks at home how to do that, Dan. Just, it, uh, so. but, I mean, there's just an option at the, at the bottom of the screen. I think it's yeah. left stick uh, yeah. on, on uh, gamepad. Um, yeah. 
that that will just sort sort your inventory in a bunch of different ways. Toggle this. Like that's fantastic. Um, it doesn't. <laughs> one thing it doesn't tell you that it should tell you, uh, just interface wise, is it doesn't give how much carrying capacity your uh, your companions have. Yeah. Yeah. That drives me nuts. It's like on on the left side you've got yep. that you've got that uh, counter for how much uh, of your carrying capacity you have left. On the right side, nope, nothing. Yep. It's like, why it's is that mystery. not there? Why is that not there? You spend this weird time like trying to fill in the cracks when you reach that point where you're yeah. like, look, you've got all this armor, you've got all these weapons. Could you at least carry an ashtray? Like, yeah. like what's the <laughs> smallest thing that you can still pack in because I need that weight? I, I know it's it's a violation and it would screw up special and all the rest, but I pray the next Bethesda game that just get rid of carry limits. Uh, nope, this, nope, I, nope. I, I want to carry it all around. Just, nope. just don't ever make me drop things off again. Then you have that's terrible. Too much in your terrible person. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a mistake. I want <laughs> giant Maniac Mansion lead line pockets that I can just drop anything in. There's, there are perks where you can expand your... your uh, yeah, like but I don't want people. those perks. I just want to carry it around. It sounds like you do want those perks. <laughs> it sounds uh, like those perks are very valuable to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, um, another one is uh, the fact that you can sit and set something. You know, I need this resource. You set that at your base. Right. Um, I, it does tell you this, but what I did, I was too dumb to figure out that the magnifying glass next to things I was looking at was the signal for that. Yeah. Oh, I was just right, like, right. when's it gonna start telling me? Right. I'm like, oh, no, that's it's dumb. Like, oh. Yeah. The, the thing that I struggled the most with that I, we, I actually only found out a couple days ago is um, how the local leader perk works. Because I had all these settlements and so and so needed food and so and so needed defense. and But I've been turning everything in at Sanctuary and I didn't want to slap back and forth all my gears and wood and steel. And I saw, oh, there's a perk that allows you to connect these. Um, so I bought it and nothing happened. And I wasn't able to access what I needed at different uh, places. And then uh, I stumbled across just being able to assign a settler to be the supply line. Uh. I thought, oh, I've got that figured out now. So I'll send them to Red Rocket truck stop or whatever. And so I followed them over to the truck stop and I thought this is gonna be really great. And they got to the truck stop and they stood at the sort of borders of the base for like a minute. And then they turned around and walked the other way. And I was like, <laughs> Okay, did that do anything? And so then I went to check the tool bench and saw, nope, none of the stuff that I had at the other base is here now, so it's clearly broken. And then I just ground out like four points of perks just to get this local leader bonus um, and spent a day just super frustrated by that. And then I realized when I went back there to build something um, that the resources are shared, they're just not shared in the inventory at the workbenches. So if you can build 17 radar towers at Sanctuary and you're linked with uh, Red Rocket Truck Stop, you go to the Rocket Truck Stop, you can still build those 17 radar towers, but it won't tell you that you have access to those resources. Oh. And so part of me was mad about that, <laughs> but part of me felt like, wow, like I discovered something. Yeah. Like I learned something about how this world works. And so there was a, a certain element of satisfaction or gratification in that. Um, at the so same I, time, I think I would rather have read that. Yeah, so yeah exactly. <laughs> like, you can, skip over, you can skip over the frustrating part. But there is something to discovery. Um, yeah. There is that part of figuring things out. I, games tell us too much sometimes. Uh, I, it's, again, I enjoy Souls games yeah. for that reason. Uh, um, I understand they have a lot of problems, but one of the things I love about them is it's, it's people made the comparison before. It's like The Legend of Zelda. They just kind of drop you in and say, go find something. Yeah. But that's the tension, I think, also between uh, what we were talking about before with the simulationist versus sort of abstracted version of things. Um, where I feel kind of annoyed that I have to pick up every pencil in the game, <laughs> right? Like I feel like it, that's going a little bit too far on the simulation side for me. And on the abstraction side, I mean there are tons of houses in any of the cities that you go to are boarded up. The designers just say, look, don't bother. Like we're just going to open up the houses where there's stuff to find. And I feel like that's a great concession. Um, but now, could you make it so I don't have to pick up every single pencil that oh, I find? I'm, I'm waiting for a box of pencils. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting exactly. for a Fallout or Bethesda like Katamari Damacy spinoff, where you just pick <laughs> up everything and start rolling. King of the Universe and, and just yeah, rolling, rolling over the wasteland. That's going to be a mod on the PC side. <laughs> I'm great with that. Sounds good. So uh, guys, thanks so much. A few pieces of uh, Volta IGN housekeeping. Thir first, thank you so much for all the messages this week. Thank you for watching. The show was a great success the first week. You made it so. Uh, yeah, share you. it with your friends. Thank you so much. We love our jobs and we love the fact that you let us keep doing this. So thanks a lot for that. Uh, also, um, uh, some of you have been asking about iTunes. We're working on it. Uh, it is coming, an audio only version of this. We're just working through some technical issues on that. That is happening. Again, thanks for the support there. Uh, keep an eye on us, keep writing. Uh, my Twitter is Petty, comma, Jared. Uh, you can reach me there. Uh, this is... At Havoc Gross, Havoc with a K. At Steve Butts. At Dan Stapleton. 
Yep, and also Amazing. our good buddy Sean Finnegan, whose uh, Twitter address I didn't write down on my paper, but uh, you can reach out to him too. Uh, like, I am. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, you can tell us over the intercom, but I don't know if he's going to. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you so very much for watching, for listening, for being a part of the community. Let us know what you want to hear about next week. Uh, we'll be back in uh, the other studio talking about that. And for everything, Fallout 4, ladies and gentlemen, where should they come? They're already there, Jared. IGN. Bye.